I think that's kind of the key to um, to doing the speaking in public thing is, let me tell you my philosophy of life because the judges look like they're going to write a short novel. Because um, I grew up in, as I say, live in, but we won't go into detail because it makes me cry. But um, I made this choice when I was about 12. I decided I would read all of the books by New Zealand writers in the library, both of them. And... Um, <laughs> One of them was Catherine Mansfield, and I'm a massive fan. But the other was um, Barry Crump's A Good Keen Man. Has anybody else read it? Yeah, it, it changed my life. It's, it, seriously, it, those of you who haven't, it's quite deep philosophy, really. Woo! Um, <laughs> not, but really. Um, and in fact, the, the, the son, Brian Crump is the guy who does nights on uh, national radio, and he's superb and very um, philosophical, actually. Anyway, the philosophy in the book is, uh, and uh, I've lived by it, never tell anybody that you don't know how to do something, because by the time they worked out that you didn't know how to do it, you will have worked out how to do it. <laughs> it's pretty much how I live my life, really. And see, these people maybe thought that they weren't really good at public speaking, but it turns out that they really are, which is superb. Our judges are ready. All right, let's move on to, we have our fifth presenter tonight, Sarah Lockwood. She's from Tauranga, the Waikato Management School here, and the title is A Match Made in Crisis, a self-organized youth volunteer response to crisis events. Focusing on the Rena oil spill crisis, this research aims to better understand the unique organizing and community communicating dynamics of Gen Y volunteers when crises strike. Would you please give a warm welcome to Sarah Lockwood. The arena grounded on Astrolab Reef, October 2011. Tons of heavy oil, countless shipping containers, dead wildlife all washed into our shores. People were outraged, they were angry, they were sad, but for Generation Y, 16 to 29 year olds, they turned out to be motivated, enthusiastic and innovative volunteers and they responded in unique ways. Focusing on the arena, my PhD aims to better understand why and how Gen Y volunteers organise and communicate when a crisis strikes. Often excluded from the traditional volunteer structures, their stories are not heard. As a Gen Y volunteer myself during the arena, I was in the unique position to understand directly from them what this crisis volunteering meant to them and how their use of technology, how their speed and how their social networking impacted on the way that they responded. Now Gen Y saw the arena as an opportunity to participate in something that was totally different, exciting and fun and they simply couldn't resist to be part of the talk of Facebook. It became an obsession. They treated it like a project. They were the students, Rena was the problem, and it was a cool problem to solve because it was unique, it was exciting, and everyone was watching. And so they became creative, and they moved away from the structured confines of the official volunteer program, like Sammy and her friends, bottom right. They worked tirelessly, baking all day and night, and then they delivered their homemade goods via army trucks along the beaches to hordes of hungry beach cleaners, it was something totally out of the ordinary. It was cool. And the efforts and rewards were instant and visual, which was important to them. And more importantly, self-organized Gen Y volunteer efforts by the likes of Sammy and her friends and others made significant differences to the overall crisis response effort. But who cares? I mean, why is this even important? Well, Gen Y efforts in Christchurch, Haiti, Kobe, and other crises worldwide have consistently shown that they're more socially connected, they're more efficient, and they're better communicated than the official crisis response efforts. But, and here's the catch, youth volunteers aren't mentioned once in crisis response policy. So despite all of this practical evidence, policy has actually excluded one of its most useful resources to effective crisis response. Next year I'll be travelling to the States to work alongside others that witnessed similar Gen Y responses to the likes of Hurricane Sandy and Katrina. We hope that our research will inform local governments how to better utilise Gen Y volunteers so that communi communities can respond better when a crisis strikes. I mean, after all, 
These are the future change makers of our society. We must give them a place in it. Thank you. And that was Sarah Lockwood. It's true, isn't it? Gen Y's different. How, hands up, where are the Gen Y's in the room? Yeah, look at you, Alexandra, you're so cute. It's true, you are, you're different. Like, you like things to be quite technical and complicated. You know, technology is really, you embrace it so much more than my generation, because you grew up with it, I guess. And I remember my daughter coming over when we had a power cut and saying that she was hungry, and I said, make a sandwich. We keep the bread in the freezer. She said, mommy, I can't make a sandwich. How do you defrost bread? Without electricity. And I said to her, you wait. <laughs> it's not really that hard, is it? But you like it to be complicated, Alexandra, don't you? So I taught her, you can do this. You can make the bread house. You get two bits of bread and you lean them against each other on the bench. Do we all know about the bread house? Lean them and when they're defrosted sufficiently to turn into a sandwich, they go, let's make a noise for it, ring a bell, whatever. I also told her if she really needed it to be high tech, we could put bread on a plate and she could turn it around and go and I'd hold a torch, but really all of that's completely unnecessary. Just wait. <laughs>